I'm with the one and only David Tua, the Tua Man Tua. How's it feel to be back in Atlantic City? Brother Rick, it's great to see you again. And, uh, and it's great to be here. Uh, it's a great honor, I think, uh, Mr. Ray McCline and uh, Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame for allowing us this great honor. Man, you fought a lot of great fights. I watch you fight a lot of great fights here and everything. Which one sticks out the most? Uh, maybe starting with Johnny Ruiz. That was a good fight. Uh, the reason being, it wasn't so much of, of uh, the knockout, but it was it was about the bout. See, the story about the bout, when I was in the amateur, I fought in the amateur, and my trainer sort of conned me into winning this, this fight. And this fight was all about this the, the bout. So for me, it wasn't just it wasn't just about the fight. It was about the trophy. So long story short, I won the fight. And then I was standing in the ring, and then they gave me a medal and then a certificate and a shield. But then I was waiting, and then the ref said, what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting for the belt. I said, oh, no, that's not for you. That's for scientific. So it broke my heart, man. So moving into the professionals, right, moving into the professionals, that was very different. So when the opportunity came to fight for the belt, yes. I wasn't going to miss out on it. So. I watch you fight one of the greatest fights of all time. It was when, when you and Ike Bayabuchi threw the, the most the most punches, a heavyweight fight. It had been the, the, the Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier owned it. Owned by Joe, Muhammad Ali, owned by Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. You broke it in a ten round. They did it in fifteen rounds. You guys did it in ten rounds. That's pretty amazing. How did you? I mean, how did you endure that? How did you throw so many punches? Sometimes, uh, sometimes, um, sometimes you just get into that mentality. You know, a fighter. You know, sometimes you gotta dig deep. You know, you gotta come up uh, against someone that that fight just as good as you, or maybe better than you, and you gotta dig deep. So it was, a, it was, it was one of those fights. Actually, the fights that I'd rather be in than the guys that run all day. You know? My brother, people tell the tale. I could see all the people that stand around you. I see all the people that, that ask you to uh, uh, sign their gloves, to sign their pictures and everything. You and your career it is, it exemplifies all the greatness that you had in there. So what are you doing now? Well, I'm back, I'm back at school. Uh, I'm back giving back to the community, to the next generation, helping our community and just enjoying life and living life. A lot of people don't know this about you, Dave. You got this thing, what you do, you write, and you write straight. David writes straight. He, it's, um, he's got the best penmanship in the whole wide world, but he writes no breaks in it at all. Lou, du Lou Duva used to say, Captain's Log, start date 2022. It's 2023. I know. You remember all that good stuff. Absolutely. Are you still writing? Yeah, absolutely. I'm still writing. Absolutely. I think self-expression and, and it's a good mental health thing as well. Because, you know, not many... Not many people get to understand how you feel, so when you can express on paper, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> well, God, God, God is good, and God has been wonderful in my life, and I wouldn't change it for anything. So if there was an encouragement that I can give to anyone that's listening out there, don't be like me, be better than me. Because as fathers, we want our kids to be better than us. As fighters, we want the next generation to be better than us. That's how it needs to be. It, it, it doesn't belong to us. We'll go to grave. We take nothing with us. So we need to share what God has blessed us with. That's right. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.